I use public transport every day, border border and taxi. I've experienced sexual harassment several times, both verbal and uh, physical contact. I used to really avoid public means of transport because I was scared I was going to be sexually harassed. I actually feared border border men so much more than anything. Yes, so I used to stay at home all the time and my sisters could move, my brothers could move, but me, I was always at home. I could only move when there was something that really needed me to move. Yeah, and when going to school, I used to go very early before the road is too busy, very, very early. I do not believe that the public transport arena is safe for women. I believe that it is a playground for men to harass not just women, but young girls. We have a historical bias against women culturally, uh, in that the women are meant to be appreciated, talked to, uh, flattered, that is the mentality. It's because of the nature of the socialization that uh, women and girls had to undergo uh, from when they were young, our grandmothers underwent it. So somehow the females actually have been taught that when it happens, you simply smile and share away and walk away. <laughs> Then I went to the girl. Then Mugamba ko. Then Natambula na again, dai. Then Nenjogera ko no Musa Jeri amu kuatira. That time, Musa Jeri again amu kuba no kuba. A number of things can be done, and uh, this is not going to be by the police alone because. Culturally, historically, it wasn't the police that actually created spaces for people to be abused in this way. So the police is going to be there to ensure that we follow through with the laws under the penal code. But the most important thing is to empower these women. And we can only do that by sensitizing them. So the police has what we call the community uh, policing uh, directorate and department, uh, which is headed by a commissioner of police. They actually move out and sensitize people about different aspects, including empowering them in self-defense. But this has to be taken on by so many other uh, stakeholders because many people reach the women more than we do. There are people who reach the grassroots and actually have these women groups. We would like to call upon them to empower the women to fight sexual harassment because it can be fought. Actually, when, when you're in a public means of transport, and somebody wants to probably sexually assault you or, or indecently touch you, and you tell them off, many of them will back away. But we need to empower these women to be able to identify that actually this is not friendship, it's an assault. One time I was going to work, I was in a taxi, and then uh, the driver started vibing me slowly, slowly. I told him, you know what, I'm not interested. And then when I told him I'm not interested, he started shouting and everyone got concerned what is happening. He was trying to say I'm seducing him and the whole taxi just turned on me and everything was not nice. I couldn't even defend myself because I was trying to say something but then the people were so many that I could not defeat them. So I just got out of the taxi even before reaching where I was heading. One of the challenges with dealing with sexual harassment and violence in public transport in Uganda for me is you can't fight back. There have been a few cases where women have fought back and they've paid for it. One of them was hauled onto a police truck. <laughs> yes, you will, you will be punished for it. You can be beaten for it, you can be threatened for it, and you can be abused for it. And when one man starts abusing you, and five start abusing you. You do not know how bad the situation is going to be. So the only solution is to be quiet and to tolerate it. What can be done to make public transport safer for women? There needs to be a focus on the actual perpetrators and not the victims of the perpetrators. And that's something that leaders can do. We need to start making them ashamed of behaving like that. Because even dogs wait for mating season. But, but the men, they're just 24-7, they're just there. 
waiting for any female to pass by from the age of eight. There's no age limit even. That's why defilement is the second highest crime in Uganda. I think uh, a lot should be done to improve the safety of women in public transport. But one I really emphasize on is the stage rules, like they should be made strict. They should make those rules in a way that protects women. I always give this example. Those men in these public transport areas who will harass a woman and give 7,000 excuses for harassing a woman. Let's say they give a miniskirt as an excuse. If you get all those men and put them in Serena swimming pool, they're not going to do anything because there they do not tolerate that type of behavior. So the spaces encourage impunity for the actions that they do. Thank you.